today we're going to be using a gradient plug. If you don't have one of these and need to know how to make one, there's lots of good free tutorials out there on making a gradient plug, but that's what we're going to use. Mine's about an inch by an inch square. Any size will work though. We got the scrap of clay cut with our small circle cutter that we'll be using for a base, a couple of basic ball tools, and a tissue blade. We're going to be taking this gradient plug and we're going to slice some fairly thick slices off of it. I'm going to come in here and get a nice fat chunk. This is probably thicker than what you're used to seeing or slicing. But we want it nice and chunky because what we're going to do is lay it down. Now I want to cut so that the gradient is going top to bottom. I don't want to cut it this way so that I have yellow and pink pieces. I want to make sure that I cut this so that there's pink and yellow in each piece. What you want to do is cut it in half and then cut those halves in half again. Four quarters, pink to yellow. And we're going to need quite a few of these for the standout piece that we're making today. So I'm going to slice up some more and get these all laid out and show you how to shape them. Okay, this is where we're going to take a minute and decide which way we'd like our flower to be. You can do this one of two ways. You can have yellow at the base with pink tips or you can have pink at the base with yellow tips. When you put this together what's at the top on this skinny part is going to be the dominant color and you, what you'll get is a hint of this base color sticking out when you put your plant together. So decide which way you'd like it. You can do it either way. I'm gonna go ahead and do let's do yellow to pink. I have a pink to yellow one already. Let's do it this way. So what we're going to do is we're going to take these pieces that we cut nice and Texas toast thick. See how that's almost a square? So now you have your own little gradient plug right here. Now, we decided that we're going to have yellow at the base and pink at the top. So what we're going to do is squeeze this, start moving that into a point, and then up here you want to kind of round this, see, skinny here. Now I'm not changing the length a whole lot, I'm just trying to change the shape. Watch this, roll it in between those fingers, starting to get a little point there. Keep it nice and smooth on the edge. Now this end, I'm trying to dent this into a rounder teardrop shape. It's getting fatter, that's okay. Keep this tiny get this rounded. We're getting closer to the shape that we want here. So now, got a nice round top. Take our thumb and our finger and smush at the bottom here on that base. Keep that teardrop shape. See what we've done? Alright, I got a little ridge there. I want to smooth that. Give it a roll again. And we have a petal. I'll give it a little, see that end the edge? Get that smooth. Those edges are going to matter. Those are what are presenting up to the world when we put this together. I'm going to put a little curve in it so it stands up. When we put it together, set them to the side and let them rest. Let's do one more of those. With the yellow at the base, pink towards the top. So go ahead, start squishing that pink more towards a point. Just finesse it. Roll. See, I rushed it. Take your time. I keep reminding myself and you that there's no shortcut for taking your time. There really isn't. I've tried them all. Alright. Round those corners off. Make that teardrop shape. As you start pressing this in, because I'm not trying to make it longer or thinner. 
it gets thicker to one end. That's okay. You want that. Roll more of a tip on here. You can set it down on your workspace. Give it a roll if you're getting too much fingerprints in it. Look at that. Nice roll on the top. Get this round. Squish. See, it's thicker than your top. Getting that taper. Come in. Put your thumb on there. Give it a little smush. Keep your teardrop shape. Got a good dent going on there. Give it a curl. Let it rest. So you want to do that to all your petal parts before you start your build. Okay, let's build the first round of plant petals in here. I'm going to grab a ball tool. This is what I always use to wrench these down. I'm going to come in here, set that flat part on my scrap. And just roll down over the front with that ball tool. It thins the front edge and helps it stand up. Now it looks like it's standing up far, but as we push other layers on, it won't be standing up quite as far. As I always am, I'm going to go for a five star pattern on my base. Set that in there. And see when you roll it up, it stands up. One, two, three. of our star right here. I've overlapped the edges a slight bit. Just thin those into the middle. You see we have that indent in there. Take a slightly bigger ball tool. I'm just going to roll that around. Oh, got a piece of schmutz in there. Oh, here we go. Okay, got that little bit of something out of there. Stray piece of clay. I think it was on my ball tool. We've all done it. There we go. So what I'm doing is just rolling that around and smoothing that. Now it's a little cup shape in there. We're going to put our next layer of five right down in there. Okay, going in for the second layer. We've done this before if you've seen any of my other videos. If not, this is something we do often. We have your five point star. The next layer you're going to set this cup, this bent end right here, down into the little cup in between the first two on the bottom row. So, set my flat edge right in there. We're going to do the same thing. Just roll that ball tool down over the top. Look, standing up. Remember how bad our first layer was standing up? They settle out. So just let it stand there. Move on to the next one. Teardrop shape down. Set it in there, right in the cup. It's going to overlap onto the other one just a hair. Don't worry about that. Just roll it down in there. Touch the tops gently. I'm barely touching these. We've rolled them. They're pretty smooth. You don't want to squeeze. Just tweezer fingers. Be gentle when you handle them. Next one, same thing. Take that cup and stick it in the cup you made down here in between the two before it. It overlaps the one inside just a little bit, that's alright. Push that down in there in that cup. So it's the same technique. Here we go. That one's overlapping a good bit. It doesn't matter what overlaps in here. This is where you want the spacing to be pleasing to the eye. So don't worry about the mess you're making in the middle. That's going to get covered up. Just make sure that the spacing is pleasing to the eye out towards your edges. 
this one looks like I skimped on that bottom part. There we go. It's a little fatter. I can make a small adjustment there. I didn't like the shape of that one. I'm putting that way down in that cup. Push. We're going to do the same thing we did before. Take that bigger ball tool and go in there. Smooth that cup out. So that you have a place to put your next layer in. I'm making that cup a little bit bigger. There we go. And see now they're not standing up quite as erect as they were before there. Now you have a cup to put your next layer of five in. Okay, one more time we're going to come in and do the exact same thing. Now we're going to go in between the star points on here, set it in the cup between the two points on the row under it, roll towards the center. In between the two points, set it in the cup, roll to the center. Touch them gently by the tips. Try not to touch them too much. That's another rule with all of these. Nature's not perfect. Don't over fuss it. Don't go in and pick at it. Just really commit to where you're going to set that. And give it a press. And where it lands, it lands. And that's usually just right when you're making something that's trying to look natural. There we go. Notice I just push. I don't touch them a whole lot after I do it. You can see how this just sprawls out. But at the end, we're going to kind of squish it all back together anyway. So for now, don't touch it a whole lot. Just smoosh those centers in and try to leave the outside alone. That's important to it keeping its shape is to not fidget with it when you're placing the leaves. Just set them in there and let go of it. Great. Spread them out just a hair to make room. Take that ball tool that's slightly bigger and do the thing that I do, smooth that cup out. Now this time I'm not going to make it bigger, I'm just making sure it's nice and smooth. Because this time we're going to take three of these points, make a cluster, and set them down in there. I'll show you that next. Okay, so for the center, we're going to come in here and take these last three pieces, take them up in our hands, and I'm just going to so set that kind of on top of that one. Set this one kind of on top of that one, fanned out. I'm going to squeeze and turn them in on themselves. See what I'm doing? Look at that. Okay. That makes... Now I am fiddling with these a little bit. Curve them out just a hair. These are mighty deep for the center of our flower right now. This is too tall. So I'm going to take my, not my sharpest tissue blade. This, this thing's fairly dull, and I make sure I use this one when I do this. But like a paring knife like Grandma used to do. Don't cut your finger, just press. Pull that off there and make it a little shorter. And now you can take this. I don't think that's short enough. I'm, I'm going to be daring here. I think it needs to be a little bit shorter yet. There we go. I'm going to set this down in. I'm going to squeeze it a little more too. Size of my cup. I'm going to roll that in my fingers now that I've trimmed it. Just taper it a little bit more. I'm not squishing this part. I'm just rolling this lightly in my fingers to taper it. Now. I'm going to drop that down in the cup in the center. Take a really small ball tool. Start pushing that in there. Now, that's not in there too great right now, but that's okay. Because this is very sprawled out and looks like a sea anemone right now. So what I'm going to do is get it up off of this paper. 
okay? Touched it gently. It's on this little scrap, right? I want to come in. I want to start pushing this in on itself. So I handle it gently. I'm not pushing hard. I'm coaxing these leaves, these very bottom layers, coaxing them into a curl. Now do you see what that's doing on the top? Now it doesn't look like a starfish anymore. I'm going to keep doing this. Just, I'm touching the outside of the base. It's part of the plant that you won't see when you have it in a dish full. I'm just trying to coax those bottoms together. And there is your piece. So it's predominantly pink, but when you turn it to see from an angle, you get that little bit of realism with that yellow coming out of the bottom. And these look great as a statement piece. Here's one I did yellow to pink. When you set that in there, it's a beautiful statement piece. So there we are. You can do it with any color of plug that you would like. Get creative with it.